Hi, welcome to episode four of the Thanks I Made It Knitting Podcast. My name's Emma, and I talk about knitting and some other things. Maybe eventually I do some sewing and stuff, but right now it's mostly knitting. Um, I just went for a walk outside, and it's a little bit rainy and windy, so... Not that I have to explain why I look the way that I look to my seven viewers, but that's my explanation. Thank you, by the way, seven viewers, and welcome to anybody else who's new. Let's dive on into it, shall we? It's been a while. I think three weeks? God, has it been three weeks since I made a podcast? It was before Thanksgiving because I was talking about the first vest project can kind of see a little sneak peek maybe there in the corner. I was talking about my first vest project that I was working on, which was the Vest Vest by James N. Watts. It's a bottom-up construction, deep v-neck. Um, I talked quite a bit about, you know, the modifications that I made and everything in some of my previous episodes. The gist of it is I shortened the body and did some decreases underneath the arms at the ribbing. My goal was to have that finished before American Thanksgiving. I did not meet that goal, despite the fact that all that I had to do was the ribbing, <clears throat> pardon me, the ribbing around the sleeves, which admittedly did not take that long, but I, don't have the best concept of like how long something will take. So it was going to take more than one afternoon of knitting, whatever, long story short, I didn't finish it in time for Thanksgiving. I'm over it. I did finish it in time for this episode. So I will go ahead and show her off. No, all the ends are not woven in. If you see any ends, close your eyes. I'm gonna get it all in frame. So this is my best vest. I made a size medium and I used Malabrigo Worsted, which is the non-superwash single ply, very soft merino wool. I didn't really alternate skeins or anything. Um, and there isn't any huge color pooling. There's like a little dark stripe right here, but um, I don't really even think that would have been avoidable because truthfully it's just three rows of slightly darker stitches that happened to be on top of each other and then it doesn't happen anywhere else in the sweater really so yeah it's it's a really nice nicely dyed yarn it's incredible incredibly soft and I don't feel like I can give a great review of how durable the yarn is or anything at this point because I haven't worn it a ton. Um, I, I have been a little bit afraid of pilling. I've been a lot afraid of pilling but I'm not gonna let that stop me from wearing it. Um, but what has stopped me from wearing it is the pants that I've wanted to wear with it. I need to clean. I just need to do the laundry. So, honesty, uh, full transparency, full honesty, I just need to do some laundry. Um, I wanna put pictures of this vest before and after blocking because the difference was insane. But I know that this would be a testament to the power of blocking this project. And I was right, it was, I was, not happy with the way that this vest was looking pre-blocking. It was bunching horribly. I was thinking, you know, basically like, oh God, I've made a hideous sweater vest. Like in my mind, a sweater, I, you know, I, I haven't really worn vests, so I'm not, you know, it's not like an easy piece to style for me just cause I'm, I'm in unfamiliar territory. And look at my nails. 
so don't look at them. Sidetracked. Uh, I'm in unfamiliar territory anyway with a vest. And so I was like looking at this hideous bunched up thing and I was like, great. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, Brain, for deciding to make this project. Uh, and then I blocked it and just let it dry. I don't have blocking mats yet. So I literally just like stomped on it in a towel and laid it on the kitchen table to dry. She's gorgeous. The ribbing is relaxed in all the right places. I'm very happy with it. Um, I made several mistakes <laughs> and I don't want to talk about them too much because I, I think they're boring mistakes, kind of. So, um, you know, things that I can learn from, obviously. I will say this is my first time doing a center double decrease and I watched The Queen, Very Pink Knits. I'll link the video I watched below, but I watched it and then when I was doing it, this was my biggest mistake. I doubted her. I said, am I doing this right? I think I'm doing it right. I watched her video. I said, yeah, it looks kind of like what I'm doing, but this just seems wrong. I was wrong. She's always right. I'll show you what I mean. I thought that my stitches were twisting incorrectly watching her tutorial. And so I, I tried to fix it myself. Stupid, never done the technique before. Why would I know better than her? I know. I only did it once and this, I think you can see this stitch right here in the center double decrease just is twisted wrong. And then I didn't go back naturally because why would I? <laughs> and um, just continued on. And of course the rest of the column looks beautiful and gorgeous because very pink knits is right. So that's a big thing. And then on the other side, did I? I kind of twisted some stitches with my SSKs because this is just like, I don't know. I, I don't really, I don't know what happened, but I realized I was doing it. I was twisting stitches during my SSKs because I wasn't slipping knit wise because I gotten so used to slipping purl wise like any other time you slip a stitch or whatever, you're like slipping it pearl wise. Don't quote me on this. I don't know. I, I twisted some stitches basically is what I'm saying over the course of this project. I don't think that they're noticeable. I think maybe if a fellow, I think maybe if a fellow knitter was like looking at this project, they would be like, some of those are twisted, but they wouldn't say anything. And I think it blocked out fine and I think it looks nice and from a distance nobody can tell and this is a deep V if you're that close on my deep V we know each other very well and I trust you not to criticize me <laughs> um so yeah this is my best best hopefully I'll have like an updated wear review for this project um I used 325 grams approximately. I had purchased four balls of this yarn from my local yarn store, Yarncom in Creepcore. Check them out, Creepcore, Missouri. Um, it's like a while away from me, but I made the trip because they have a pretty good stock. And this is all that I have left of my fourth ball. I mean, it's 75 grams, so I can do something with it. I'll make some mittens or something, I don't know. But I I talked in my last episode too, so I won't, I'll try not to reiterate too much, but um, thank God I cropped this because this project gobbled up this yarn way more than I thought it would. Of course, I'm not using the recommended yarn, anything like that, but um, it'll work out. Obviously, I'm not worried about it, but just beware if you're going to be making the size medium and you're not going to be cropping it i would maybe think about getting a fifth ball of worsted by malabrigo i 
I think that's all I have to say about this. Thumbnail. Just kidding. Um, okay, my next, my next finished object um, is a hat that I was making that I talked about. It's the two by two hat. Oh. Also, we're gonna interrupt our broadcast. I have no notes. I'm facing a different direction. All sorts of, the light is, this is the only way the light was playing even slightly nice with me. So I'm a little scattered today, just like every other day. I like to think that that's why you love me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm a little scattered today. Long story short, I forgot the name of the designer for this pattern. All the information will be in the description box below. But this is the two by two hat. It's a free pattern. Honestly, it looks a lot like the hipster hat, I think, by Petite Knit, um, which is not a free pattern. So do with that information what you will. I doubt that, you know, I'm, uh, uh, you know, yeah. Do with that information what you will. But this is my finished hat. It's blocked and everything. Um, I made this out of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color natural. Again, we've covered I hate this yarn. And I think that I did more frogging on this project than I did knitting, if I'm being honest. I had some goals, some lofty goals to kind of freestyle my own um, crown decreases for this pattern. And I think that I will, because I was inspired by the Manhattan hat by, again, it's in the description. Um, I was inspired by some other hat pattern crown decreases and I'd already made this hat before. Do I have it? It fell this way. So I'd already made this hat. This one is unblocked and it's in super wash wool and I was wearing it on my walk. So this is the same hat. It's the two by two hat. This was in Fibra Natura Lima. I just got this at the thrift store. Um, I had two balls of it. This is what's left over. I think this is like 27 grams from a 100 gram skein. Might be more than that. I'll, I'll fact check myself. And so since I'd already made the two by two hat pattern, I was like feeling really confident. <laughs> I was like, let me, let me try and freestyle some crown decreases. Just see what happens. I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> it was bad. It was, they were, we learned a lot. We learned a lot and I will attempt to tackle again, but um, in the end, the hat won it bested me and I just did the same crown decreases. God, this one looks so raggedy and like unblocked and been worn a bunch. And this one looks so new. Also, this is just worsted weight. This is technically like an Aran weight and the pattern I believe calls for a worsted. But I think it's a cute hat. I am gifting this hat, so let me take it off. I'm giving this, um, to my brother's partner, girlfriend, Grace. She's great. I think it would look really cute on her. And I, I don't want it. <laughs> I would like one like it, but I do not want this one. Um, this one deserves to go to a loving home that does not have memories of like frogging and tinking and everything um because i <laughs> i don't have any pictures unfortunately of what my crown decreases were looking like but i for the strategy that i had 
I had started way too, the, the hat was already way too long. Like I, there were too few stitches on my needles already, everything like that. And so I literally was making like, a, it looked like a condom. <laughs> like I would put it on and like it had like a little, like the tie is so stupid. I'll try and, maybe I'll try and illustrate what it looked like. But it was horrid. It was literally, I put it on in front of my boyfriend and he just started laughing so hard. And I, I couldn't even be mad. He was completely right. It looked ridiculous. It was like, it was like this, except then it was like another three inches of like, just of like condom, basically. Like the color didn't help. It was just not, <sighs> sorry for that visual maybe, but hopefully you can see why it was funny and why I gave up and just did the, sometimes the designers know best. And in this case, they did. So, ay ay ay. I do need to weigh my yarn to figure out how much I have left. But this didn't take very much at all. And um, I think I could make like a matching pair of mittens. I don't plan on doing that before Christmas when I'll be gifting this to her. I just don't have time. I, the pressure of gift giving is immense for me. And yeah, everybody, I'm sure most people understand that. So I'm just not gonna add another thing to my plate of what I feel like I should be giving people. I think she's gonna love this. I hope she does. And if she doesn't, she will. So yeah, this is my two by two hat. I don't really have any notes on the pattern. I think it's great. It's very mindless, two by two ribbing, free. <clears throat> I made it a few times, recommend. Next. Okay, my is this my last finished object? My final finished object is very exciting to me. I talked kind of absentmindedly at the end of last episode about how I've never knit socks. I feel like knitting socks is kind of like an exclusive club. Um, and I talked a little bit, or I tried to express a little bit about how I kind of struggled with like, yeah, knitting socks looks like it could be fun, but it also like tiny yarn, tiny needles. Am I just gonna wear through them immediately? Like it's socks. Is that really the most exciting thing to knit? And then I talked about how I'd spoken with my aunt who is like a prolific sock knitter and she typically knits DK weight socks. And I was like, oh right, you can do it and you can knit socks in other weights. And then she sent me the pattern that she typically makes. And I was like, oh right, you can knit patterns for socks. You like their patterns for socks in different weights and they're not all crew socks. So, you know, Please welcome to the stage my DK weight shorty socks, stripey shorties. Um, this was the first one that I made and the self-striping, okay, let me back up. These are the community socks. Again, the designer of this pattern, I deeply apologize. The information is in the description box. It's a free pattern. It's wonderful. What a great first sock pattern. Like truly, it gets you into the nitty gritty of like the construction of a sock. And it's not like knit a tube for eight inches, which, you know, I now am 
ready and willing to do that. But, uh, you know, I was kind of like, okay, I've never done this before. Let me just figure out how it's done. So it's the community sock pattern and the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners Self Striping. I think the colorway is Forest, Forest Floor or something like that. Um, I will, looks like this, I don't know. I'll put, I'll put the information in the description box. Um, and the first one I made, which was this one, I flubbed a little bit of the self striping aspect of it because when I started my cuff, I had, um, I don't know, I, I, I'd never done this before. So I had some of the, I didn't just start like casting on and knitting with like one section of the stripe, which was my mistake. So you can see here, there's like a little tiny bit of this pink in the cast on, which then threw off the striping for the rest of the sock. And I wasn't, I'm not a perfectionist in that way. Like I, uh, I kind of just like the process and the meditativeness of, of knitting. And there are some things, you know, like I talked about with my best best and other projects where I'm like, mm, this mistake is not catastrophic to me. Like uh, it probably, you know, reasonably would be for other people. And I don't, you know, no, no, their projects often come out looking a lot nicer than mine, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just didn't feel, I just wanted to make the sock. But I've now learned that that's a really easy thing to fix just like right away, because then when I was doing my heel flap and gusset and everything, I did get this little strip of pink intermixed in with the green because I did the pink like heel I don't know is that the heel cap I guess and then you know picked up back around to connect the two pieces again and got this little strip of green which I eliminated completely in this one because I picked up correctly or I cast on correctly with just one one of the color sections in this one so everybody else is like yeah we know we knit socks that are self-striping but if you don't know now you know <laughs> um and they also aren't like a perfect match because again like that's just not that wasn't important to me with this pair of socks. I just wanted to do the process. I love them. I love them. I blocked them. Uh, I don't have sock blockers, so I just laid them flat again. Um, and I haven't worn them since I blocked them so that they would look nicer and prettier for this podcast. They're a little loose. Um, not so loose that I can't wear them at home and stuff and they're wonderful like house socks and bed socks and that's mostly where I wear them but yeah they're great they're fantastic I love them I think that they're so cute and the stripes and the shorties 10 out of 10 recommend like life hack you're new to knitting socks just do this this wool has this yarn is 100% wool so there's no nylon for added strength or anything but again, they're just going to be around the house socks. I don't think that I'll blow out like a heel or a toe or anything. But yeah, I'll put a picture, hopefully, of what they look like on. I'm a little obsessed. <laughs> like in an embarrassing way, I'm like holding. I'm like, I just caught this. I'm going fishing. Just caught this. Just caught another one profile pic so yeah I'm I'm a part of the sock club now it's the DK shorty sock club at least oh I know something else I can say okay so I cast it on I cast on the women's size like the large size for the women the larger of the two sizes 
How is that pattern set up? What did I even do? Intermission. Okay. So there's a size A and a size B. I cast on the size B. And I, th God, I think I just did. Yeah, I just did a long tail cast on. So it's not super stretchy, but I cast on the larger size. And then when I was doing my decreases here for the gusset, I decreased to the smaller size. So that meant that I had more stitches on my instep, the top part of the sock, than I did <clears throat> on the bottom. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that meant I had more steps, more stitches on my instep, the top of my foot, than I did on the bottom. Um, and I have kind of high arches, so when I was trying them on periodically, like that just felt like the best fit. I was like, oh, this feels kind of loose, decrease, and then I just wound up being at the smaller size. So then when I was doing my decreases for the toe, I basically, like I started doing decreases on the top and the bottom of the foot, and then I was like, oh right, I have to kitchen this together. So I just stopped doing decreases on the bottom and continued to work like the decrease round, plain knitting round pattern for the top until I had the same amount of stitches and I just kitchenered the toe shut. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know if you have any questions, but again, I think I don't uh, other, I think that's frequently done and not, I obviously didn't come up with that. I was just kind of freestyling it into a way that seemed like it would fit the topography of my foot the best. Um, if slash when I make these patterns, these, these socks again, I'm going to do a stretchier cast on like a German twisted or something um, and cast on the smaller size though, because I, I don't really need the large size at my ankle that contributes to them kind of slipping off when I wear them just in like shoes to walk around or clogs to walk around. So yeah, this is, oh, I have it pulled up. So I'll just tell you, this is the Community Socks Pattern by Sarah Eichhorn. Love them. Highly recommend. Time to talk about some, God, my hair got crazy. <laughs> Time to talk about some whips, some works in progress. Where to begin? Let's get started with my longest standing whip. which the last time you saw it was a silly little trapezoid shape and now has some, I don't know, it, it makes a little bit more sense visually for me. So this is my winter moonlight. Well, okay, maybe it doesn't make more sense visually when I hold it up, that's funny. This is my winter moonlight cardigan. Patterned by, I believe, Mini Me Knit Designs. But again, all information is listed down below. So I have, since you saw me last, I'll just try and show it to you. I had basically this back panel done, which is this kind of uh, trapezoid shape back here. So then I picked up and knit along the sides here. And I've since joined the front with the back. So I'm working like, it's a cardigan, so it's open here, but I'm working across the back like this. And this is a, another one similar to my two by two hat. I think the theme of this episode is, maybe this channel is frogging or unknitting. I'll post a little clip. Um, yeah, so I had some technical difficulties and the pattern that I had downloaded and marked up and everything in my iPad was removed from my cloud drive. Don't know how, don't ask me. 
super annoying, really, really sad. And so I thought that I had counted out like which row I was on and the stitches and everything. And I tried to salvage it and just, cause I didn't know what row I stopped on. Like I didn't know where I was in the pattern. I was completely lost. And so I tried to pick it up and knit it and it just, the math was wrong. And so I had a significant amount of progress that I had to rip out. And then I just kind of put this pattern in timeout. Like, again, no fault of this, or I put this project in timeout. It was no fault of the pattern or anything like that. I just, I was like, okay, it's not meant to be right now. It is not meant to be. And then I put my big girl pants on and uh, started over and made a ton of progress really, really quick. I had a lot of meetings and it's just playing back and forth. Just, nah, 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 nah. Um, so it was really, really easy to knock out some progress on this. And I'll try and insert some pictures where you can see the details a little bit better because it's kind of a nightmare to try and show like this. And I'm not gonna jinx myself and say that, you know, oh, it would be nice to have this done for Christmas dinner because it is the 17th. It isn't, it is, if it's done, it's a Christmas miracle but I'm not having a repeat of the Thanksgiving best where I built it up in my head as something that I really wanted to have. So if it gets done, it gets done. But it is really fun um, to knit. I'm really enjoying it. I haven't done a garter stitch garment before. And I'm really happy to be using my unwound yarn without straightening it, which is shame on me but I'll post some close-up pictures. You know, I'm just happy to, I'm happy to be using it and not letting a sweater's quantity of yarn like languish in my stash. I'll try and show some close-ups of the colors that are going on. I don't know. But I love the way that this yarn is working up. It looks kind of like an oil slick. You know, there's like some blues and purples and yellows and mostly it's grayish and blackish, but I think it's really looking really nice and yeah, I can't wait to have it. The construction is engaging and the stitch counts are really pretty, like you're just working back and forth and it's like, you know, 80-ish stitches. I don't know if nobody can, that doesn't matter. There's like 80-ish stitches for each of the front panels, which, you know, that makes it go really quick. Um, I am slowing down a little bit now that I've joined underneath the arms, but I think I have some short row sections coming up and those always seem to go pretty quickly for me. Um, So yeah, that's the progress that I've made. I, well, my air just kicked on. Hopefully my noise canceling stuff in, in post can take care of that. But this looks ugly, whatever. But yeah, uh, I don't have a ton to say about this. The construction is engaging. The pattern is well written. Um, there aren't a ton of projects on Ravelry for it. It was released at the end of 2023, like not very long ago, but I, I have a feeling this one might take off. I don't know. It's so like romantic with the mohair, but then the variation kind of brings it back down to like casual for me. So I think, you know, if you wanted to make like a black one, oh, or a white one, a white one would be so stunning or like baby blue even. Um, yeah, there's some, I can't wait to see, you know, other people's projects and color choices. 
for this, but I'm really, really happy with the way that my colors are working um, with this stitch pattern and this, this project. Okay, my next work in progress is like a scrap busting kind of a deal. So it's using my leftover West Yorkshire spinners self-striping. Um, and I'm, ow, I just ripped my hair out from my glasses. Anyway, it's using my leftover self-striping yarn from West Yorkshire spinners. Uh, I didn't weigh it. Sorry, I meant to, or I did, and I forgot the number. It's probably more likely, so I'll weigh it after. But I have a little bit of leftover yarn, not enough to really do anything interesting with. I didn't want to make mittens uh, or anything like that, really, with this. But I'm making, okay, so, you know, the, like, hot water bottle cozies have been kind of popping off this year like there's some really cute designs seems like you know a lot of people are making them um looks like they would be like great little gift knits to go for like a little hot water bottle i think it would be so cute to give that as a gift um this is kind of like a similar idea so i'm just kind of free balling the stitch count and everything but i'm making this for an ice pack so I kind of hurt my Achilles tendon recently, don't know how, but I have just been like icing it and I've been wrapping the ice pack in a kitchen towel and like putting it in, here I'll show you, putting it in my like ankle brace thing. But uh, the kitchen towel, it's just kind of, it's like a whole thing. You have to like really wrap it up. It's annoying. So I'm just making like a little cozy for my ice pack. I thought it was cute. I don't know. I don't even know how many stitches I cast on. I basically was like pulled out a tail, did a long tail cast on, and like just kind of folded the cast on in half <laughs> around the cozy and it's like this will fit. And it does. It's a great way to measure it. Measure it. So I just did like a rolled hem and then I did like two by two ribbing, just like three rounds of it. You can't even tell. So it's just two by two ribbing. And I think I'm going to thread like a little ribbon through it <laughs> after it's done. Because uh, the ribbons are in. And just because I think it would be cute and silly. But uh, yeah, this is, it's just a scrap buster. Um, just like a silly little sitting on the TV, sitting on the couch watching Christmas movies on TV project. But I love stripes. I love them. I want to knit more things with stripes. I need, I have not made a striped project yet. Aside from those socks, I guess. I can't even say that anymore. I haven't made enough striped projects yet. I have nothing else to say about this. I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, I'm probably just going to do, I'm gonna knit it so that it's a little bit longer, hopefully, assuming I don't run out of yarn. Otherwise, I'll just introduce a new color. Uh, and then I'll probably just do like a three needle bind off at the end. Maybe I'll felt it if it's a little bit too big. I don't know, we'll see. I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on the creative process for this one, but it's just like a silly little project. And finally, my last, my last work in progress before we get to start talking about my upcoming plans. It is not my partner pullover, sad face, haven't cast that on yet. Yes. But it is, this is a Hershey's Kiss wrapper in my project bag. More socks. So... These are the Cozy Toes socks that I was talking about, how I wanted that to be my first project. 
obviously they were not my first project my stripey ones were because they were shorter in stripes and then after i reflected on that i was like no that would be more engaging let me do those uh but i did cast these on this is my first one and that super bright like fuchsia cascade 220 it's a sock it's a vanilla sock but I'm working on the heel flap of my second one and um, for my second sock I have been keeping track of like how long it's taking me to knit so because I'm curious like I want to know how long is does it take approximately to make a pair of socks <sighs> again in on theme with this episode, I did have to undo, I had to rip out the second sock. So I was knitting along, I was doing the cuff, I was so happy, I was recording my little like video, keeping track of my time, having a grand old time. I, I fucking, I did it in one by one rib. I had this sock sitting right next to me, two by two, clear as day. Just two by two rib sock. I'm not looking at the pattern that closely. I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. I cast on however many stitches I knit, blah, blah, blah. And then I paused and I like, I was like looking at them next to each other and it still wasn't clicking in my brain. I was like, something's different here. Something ain't right. Yeah, something wasn't right. So I ripped it out and uh, now it looks beautiful and it's perfect. I have no complaints. But uh, yeah, it's the Cozy Toes pattern. I'm not following the pattern exactly. Like I think the slip stitch heel is a little bit different as written in pattern. Um, but I'm doing, a, I just basically did the heel flap from the community socks pattern because it was, it's so easy. I just had it memorized. And then um, I did something similar with the decreases here. So I cast on the largest women's size or like recommended women's size and then wound up decreasing to the smaller woman's size. And then just did more decreases across the insep than I did at the bottom so that I could Kitchener the toes together. <sighs> Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Like sock club exclusivity met. I don't know. I haven't blocked this sock yet, um, but this one I really, I know I just said like, I'm not putting pressure on myself. I'm putting pressure on myself for this one. Um, I want to finish these before the 22nd because I want to wear them to like a little Christmas dinner with my boyfriend. I just think it would be super cute. I have this, my outfit so far is like this black mock neck dress with sleeves and it's all ruched. It's like a midi length. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to take this like dress in a dressy way. Like I'm, I'm not a super like glammed I'm not a super glam person, um, but yeah, I I wanted to like bring it back down to like me a little bit. And so I want to wear some like cute, chunky black Mary Janes and these socks. And hopefully the dress hasn't come. I ordered it. So hopefully it comes soon and hopefully I finish this. So otherwise I'm screwed. I don't know what I'm going to wear, but I'll have to post an outfit reveal my next video or you can follow me on instagram and you'll probably see it there it's at old hoft it's in the description below but um yeah pink vanilla socks strawberry vanilla so i'm just going to save up that those are my all my current whips. 
Let's talk lands. I think I'm going to cast on the partner pullover as part of my like winter break, Christmas time knitting. Cause my boyfriend will be out of town visiting his family. I'm just gonna be chilling at home knitting. And I think that would be like a fun project to do. So my partner pullover by Lydia, it was Lydia Burrow or Lydia Morrow? It's Lydia Morrow. So yeah, my partner pullover, I purchased the pattern by Lydia Morrow and I posted a poll on my Instagram story because after I bought the pattern, I was like, oh, do I want to do the stripes or the checkers? I had stripes in my like heart and my gut and my soul <laughs> when I, or not stripes, squiggles, excuse me. My God, it squiggles in my heart and my mind and my body and soul for this pattern. And then I was looking at it and I was like, oh no, should I do checkerboard? And then I posted it on my Instagram. And for the first while, checkerboard had slayed the vote. Like it was 100% checkerboard. And then I saw that and I was like, no, now I have to make squiggle. I cannot let them do this to my squiggle sweater, my heart and mind and body and soul design. Uh, so yeah, I did the opposite of what everybody voted for. And then the votes, thank God, caught up and everybody voted squiggle. So I will be making the squiggle version of this sweater. I think looking at the size chart, I'll probably make the size four in the cropped version. Ew, probably head of hair. Yeah, make the size four in a cropped version without hip shaping. And, oh, I need to decide if, cause it's bottom up and you start with the sleeves. So I need to decide if I'm gonna be brave and do a tubular cast on. Cause if I do a tubular cast on for the sleeves, I'm gonna have to do a tubular cast on for the body. Or if I want to be lazy and do just like a German twisted or something cast on. So that's something that I'm ruminating on. It's not an easy decision. I know it's like, it's the beginning of the project. Take the time, do the nice cast on. It's a crazy color work sweater. Like it's gonna be a long haul project for me. I'm anticipating. This is not gonna be a sweater that I finish in a month. Um, so I should really probably take the time and do a tubular cast on. I'm, this, is, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and do a tubular cast on. And then if I hate it and I hate my life, Good, better, best, right? We're, we're gonna shoot for best. That, by the way, I stole from uh, Retro Claude, who I love her videos um, and her stash busting series. So I'll link her channel below. But she um, talks a lot about like disability and accessibility with her videos and how she's implemented like a good, better, best system. And I was like, that is genius. That is so good. And uh, I just really use it in like everything in my life at this point. I try to, I think about it. So best, we're gonna shoot for a tubular cast on. If I hate it, if I hate my life, I'll do something else. We'll, we'll cross that road when we get there. But, so I think that's, I've decided for myself now. And then also another thing that I want to cast on is I bought a Ursina, I think, Ursina pattern. Um, oh no, that's different. That's a different pattern. It's the Ursa Canis by Jacqueline Seaslack. It's um, her dog sweater. I want to show you this guy. No disrespect to the other dog, but the colors just pop on this one. So it's her cute, super cute uh, dog sweater pattern. I purchased that for my little dog. Where are you? Oh, oh my God. 
and he's there, pass out. He's tired from our walk. Hi, come here. Come here. <gasps> okay. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna make, this is Frankie. And uh, we're gonna be making Frankie the Ursa Canis sweater. And um, it's a worsted weight pattern, has like half brioche, I think, details. It's super cute. Obviously, I'll probably have to make myself a matching sweater. So maybe the Ursa sweater for humans is in my future as well, but I haven't, haven't decided fully. Um, and originally I was gonna use that. I can't grab it to show you now, sorry, I'm cradling a dog, but I was gonna use that Fibra Natura Lima that I showed you that I made that two by two hat out of, but it's like really dark navy or black. <laughs> and I was like, the details just aren't gonna show up and he's such a beautiful like red brown color. I was like, no, he needs a pop of color. So I ordered some yarn, hasn't arrived yet. I'll show it off when it arrives. <clears throat> so I ordered some like green yarn. And I think it's like a warm green, so I think it'll look nice with his fur. Um, but yeah, I... Oh. Those are my, I have a sweater for me and a sweater for Frankie. And I don't really have any other firm plans, but those two things I know I'm gonna make. I would like to make another sweater for my boyfriend. I'm still looking at some pattern ideas for that. And I would like to make myself some mittens um, cause it's getting a little bit chilly on our walks. And so, thank you. And so I think it's time for me to, to knit some mittens. I'm gonna go lay down. Sorry, that was getting uncomfortable. <laughs> But I haven't really decided on a pattern for those either. I, I think I'll probably make just some like plain, fairly plain, not color work or anything, fingerless mitts. Uh, what else? Oh, I also, I wanna make a baby sweater. I can't remember if I was talking about that in my last podcast episode, but um, I downloaded a free pattern by Tin Can Knits. I'll link it in the description. I can't remember exactly what it's called. No, not Tin Can Knits. They have a free sweater pattern. It's like the flax, but I didn't download that one. Who was it by? It was Hedgehog Fibers, I think. I don't know that they're free sweater pattern. It's like a free raglan. Because uh, I have some babies in my life that I want to make some things for. And I think it'd be so cute to see them in little sweaters. But I don't have a timetable for those. Um, oh, I should do it soon because they grow so fast. So yeah, I'll link the hedgehog fibers pattern below. But it's just like a really simple raglan style sweater it's just i don't want to improv a raglan sweater for babies because i don't have a baby like i don't know really what size they are <laughs> i could look it up and like do some math and some measurements but why would i do that when some kind person has already done it for me um so yeah my partner pullover frankie's ursa canis some mittens, a baby sweater. If anybody has any mitten pattern recommendations that they really like, um, feel free to drop those below. I did see um, Venicia from The Lily Worker has improved like some penny knit style gloves, like the petite knit penny gloves. Penny knit, <laughs> uh, petite knit penny gloves. 
she's improved some and they are so oh she made this like i don't know made cookie. leave it she made this like tomato coral pear so good like such a good color um and so that kind of got my brain turning but yeah i think that's all my future knitting plans at least at this moment in time my hair is really so yeah i think that's all my future knitting plans for this moment in time um thank you so much for watching i think i'm running out of things to say touch for clicking and watching and commenting and all of the things um if you are interested at all you're welcome to be my friend on Ravelry um, or on Instagram uh, it's not like a knitting Instagram so much as it's just my Instagram and I post about things that I knit sometimes so don't like you know it's just me uh, you don't have to <laughs> I don't know I don't know what to say like it's not like a thanks I made it Instagram it's just me but I did make it the Instagram account and like, anyway. Uh, thanks so much for joining and yeah, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.